Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall, and in this video I will show you how to set up and use Microsoft OneDrive on Windows 11, 10, 8, and 7 computers, and on an Android phone, and show how the application works on them. Microsoft OneDrive is technically two different things, but they are related to each other. OneDrive, the online application and storage that is hosted on Microsoft servers, is basically cloud storage. It's like a hard drive on the internet. And then OneDrive, the application that you can install on your computer, is a file synchronization app that allows you to mirror data on your computer or computers with the OneDrive cloud storage and application. When you use the OneDrive file synchronization application, which exists by default on all Windows 10 and 11 systems, that data is constantly synchronized multiple ways between your computer or computers, phone, and Microsoft servers. Also, when you're using OneDrive cloud storage and the OneDrive file sync app together, any data you choose to synchronize sits in two different physical locations at any given time. So OneDrive can also be considered a small scale backup solution. First, I'm going to show you the OneDrive cloud storage and application, and then I'm going to also set up OneDrive, the file synchronization application on my computer. Then I'll show you how the synchronization works between the two and how you can specify exactly what you want to synchronize between the two locations. Then lastly, I'm going to show you how you can also use OneDrive on your Android phone or iPhone so that you can have the files in your OneDrive available anytime, anywhere. You can get the iPhone version of OneDrive File Sync app at the Apple Store, and you can get the Android version of the OneDrive File Sync app on Google Play. Let's get to it. First, OneDrive online storage and application. If we just open any web browser, I like Google Chrome, and go to OneDrive, and the first one that shows up in Google search is personal cloud storage, Microsoft OneDrive. This is what we want. This is the free version. So I'm going to click on that and then sign in. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I've already created a Microsoft account. But if you don't have one, you can create one for free. And once you have a Microsoft account, you automatically get five gigabytes of free cloud storage. And the OneDrive file synchronization app is also free to use as well. So I'm going to sign in with my Microsoft account. And in my case, they want to verify my email. So they're going to send a code to my other email address. Enter the email that the code will go to and send the code. And I'm going to actually stay signed in. So this is the OneDrive cloud storage and application. Um, they have a little tutorial here. I'm just going to skip that. The first thing is you can see here your storage that's available for free. This is five gigabytes. And right now, 1.1 megabytes are used. The maximum file size of a single file that can go in here is 250 gigabytes. So that's a very large file. You can upload things to Microsoft OneDrive and share them out that you won't be able to send via text or email because they're simply too large. Say you have you know, a five or 10 gigabyte file you wanna send someone. The easiest way to do that is to upload it into Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive and then share it out with them and then they can either just view it or download it themselves. Having really large file size limits is really nice for cloud storage. And then they create some default folders here. I personally don't like to have anything pre-made for me. This is what Microsoft thinks you want to see here. But this one is actually a little bit interesting to me. The personal vault, if I want to open that, I have to verify my identity, even though I already just did that in signing in. So there's an extra layer of security associated with that. Whereas if I go to just documents, I can just open that folder. I'm just gonna go through the process of opening this to see what happens. I'm interested in the additional security that it's offering. So I'm gonna verify my identity. Same thing, I just have to get that code again. Verify. And it is actually handy if you put the OneDrive app on your phone and you have a biometric sensor like face recognition or fingerprint sensing, you can authenticate on your phone as well. The phone works like a two-factor authentication device in those cases. Well, that can be pretty handy. Right now, I'm gonna say no on that. Okay, so personal vault is your place within OneDrive with an extra layer of security. It will automatically lock after 20 minutes of inactivity. A place to store files within OneDrive Cloud that's more secure than regular OneDrive Cloud. But when it comes to online storage, these are things that you should be using complex passwords for and you should have backup recovery emails and your phone number listed with them that are that are actually accurate. So they're highly secure to begin with. You don't wanna play around with security 
with stuff you're hosting in the cloud. Because if you have simple passwords or people can get the two-factor authentication codes off your phone, you may as well just give it away to the internet. You wanna take cloud storage security seriously from the very beginning. Use complex passwords and make sure you have the verification email or phone number set up correctly. So that's basically Vault. What I actually like to see in my online storage is just nothing, right? I don't wanna see anything when I'm starting with a blank slate. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this. Okay, so we can actually disable the vault in settings, but we can't delete it. So personal vault, I'm gonna disable it. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. All right, then I'm gonna go back to the homepage and then I'm gonna delete these. Those are just templates they give you. You don't have to use what they give you. The beauty of these cloud storage applications and the file synchronization apps is that you can have your data organized however you want it organized. I'm gonna add some folders to this. Folder one. And normally, you know, I'd have names on these that are actually for things I'm gonna use. I'm gonna add a new folder, folder two. And then say I want to upload some data that I already have on my computer. I want to get it into Microsoft OneDrive. So I go to my downloads folder. It can be any folder. You can be choosing data anywhere on your computer. And the easiest way to get it into OneDrive is just select it. And by the way, when you click on an item and then hit the control key, you can multiple select and you can unselect things. So I'm holding the control key down. I'm hitting one, another, and another. Maybe I don't want that one. I can unclick it but I actually want all three of them. So now I have all three of them and I'm just gonna drag these and drop these directly into OneDrive. And you can see the progress up here, uploading three items. And if you click on that, you can actually see the real time progress, how much has been uploaded. Those are going up to the Microsoft OneDrive cloud right now. And one thing you'll notice, this is a 277 megabyte file. That's one quarter of a gigabyte, roughly. Large files are not a problem to be uploaded into these cloud storages like Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. If you tried to send this file through email, it's too large. If you tried to send this file through text, it's too large. So now all those files have uploaded. And one of the handy features about cloud storage, like Microsoft OneDrive, is that you can share these out with people. So if I click on this and then go to share, there's a couple pretty sweet options here. I can share it out via email. I can share it out via link. I can choose whether I want it to be read only if I uncheck this, that means it's read only and they can't edit it. If I check this, then they can make changes to it. So I'm just gonna get a link and then copy this. And again, control C in Windows systems is copy. And then I'm gonna go to outlook.com, which is Microsoft's free email platform. It's the same Microsoft account that's logging into both these. So I'm just logged right into my email and I'm gonna send that link to my other email address. Here's that file I shared with you. And I mentioned this in the Google Drive video and I'll mention it again. If you get an email from someone you don't know that says, hey, I shared this file with you, don't open it. It's not gonna do you any good. They want something from you. If someone sends you a file share or an attachment and you don't know them, they want something from you and they're trying to take something from you without your permission. One way or another, that's what's happening. So if you don't know who sent you the email, delete it, ignore it. If it's important, they will get in contact with you. So I'm just going to paste this link in here and send it. Now, my primary email receives a notification that says, hey, this person sent you a file, you can view it here, and they can click the link and view that file or download it. And then when your files are in OneDrive Cloud, you can download them if you wanna pull them out of the cloud. Obviously, again, you can delete them. Say for example, maybe I don't want this file in here anymore. I'm just gonna delete it and it's gone. You get a notification that's being deleted. So that's Microsoft OneDrive, the cloud storage and application side. Now I'm gonna show you Microsoft OneDrive, the file synchronization app, and then how these two work together seamlessly. So I'm just gonna minimize this for a second. Microsoft OneDrive file synchronization app is native to all Windows 10 and Windows 11 system. And what that means is that it's installed by default and it's also actually running by default. This is one of the things where if you don't use OneDrive, I suggest turning it off because otherwise it's just sitting there doing nothing. In this case, we are going to use it and it's already running. So I'm just gonna click it and do sign in, enter my Microsoft account email address, sign in, I have to do the email verification again. 
once the OneDrive application is signed in, you don't have to enter passwords and do verification emails anymore. This is a one-time process. After we do this, the OneDrive file synchronization application is just gonna run seamlessly in the background and we don't have to sign in and out of it. So I'm gonna grab that code again. I'm gonna opt out of sending data, optional data. And now here's where you can specify the location of the folder that will be synchronized with Microsoft OneDrive Cloud. I actually like this location and I like the name of it. C users Frank OneDrive. If you by chance saw the Google Drive video, you noticed that I created a folder called Google Drive at the exact same location, C users Frank Google Drive. And that's simply because this is Microsoft OneDrive. And when I look at that folder, I know that anything that goes in that OneDrive folder is synchronized with the cloud and that any subfolders or data I put in there is synchronized with the cloud. It's super easy and super straightforward. So I actually like that location and I'm gonna keep it. And I'm not gonna go premium now. Um, we don't really need a tutorial, but we're just gonna go okay. And we'll get the mobile app, but not right now. Open my OneDrive folder. And I'm just gonna close this for a second, just again to show you where it is directly in File Explorer. So if you open up File Explorer and you go to this PC, local disk C, users, and then under your username, my username is Frank, here we have OneDrive. And you can see this is also where I created the Google Drive folder. And what you can do, if you're gonna be accessing this regularly, you can right click it and pin to quick access. And then it's sitting right there. And now this becomes really handy because if I'm moving files around, I'm working, I'm doing whatever I want. There's my OneDrive, there's my Google Drive. This one's synchronized with Google servers, this one's synchronized with Microsoft servers, and they're just really quick and easy to access. I have some data in there have some data in here. If you notice, I'm just gonna move that to the side and then minimize this. If you notice, these have already synchronized. Folder one, folder two, this image, and getting started PDF. These are the exact same pieces of data in here. Now, you saw when I deleted something from the cloud, it deletes, right? Well, what if I delete something here? What happens to the cloud when I delete something here? Yes, I wanna delete. And then here we get a warning. Deleted files are removed everywhere. This is called multi-way synchronization. And the concept is that there's no hierarchy between devices. It's not like one device is more important than the other. All devices are equal. And the moment you delete something on one device, it gets deleted off of all other devices. So if you delete something on your local computer, it gets deleted from the cloud. There it is, gone. And it also gets deleted from your phone. If you delete something on Microsoft OneDrive in your phone, it gets deleted from here, your local computer, and the cloud. If you delete something from the cloud, it gets deleted on your local computer and your phone. It's always multi-way synchronizing between all of the devices that are signed into OneDrive. And this is the power and usefulness of these applications. You see the exact same data no matter where you are in the world and no matter what device you are on. It's extremely useful for having access to your data anywhere, anytime. And then the inverse is true of creation of something. Say I create a new document here. Let's do a new plain text document. I'm just gonna call it test drive create. So I created that in my OneDrive. There it is. And there it just showed up on the local computer. This data is living in two places at the same time. You're not just seeing a representation of this. This data is actually here on this computer and it's actually also on this server. And that's why I said it could be considered a small scale backup solution because say for example, something happens to your computer and this data is lost. Well, you still have a copy of it on the server. It's all right there. Again, this is only data that you put in the OneDrive folder. If you have data um, under documents or desktop, that stuff is not being synchronized with OneDrive. It's only this folder. And then you can also see real time status of uploads that are pending. So say for example, I go back to downloads and I take this file that I deleted previously, I wanna copy it and I wanna put it in OneDrive. I paste it in there. Now you can see that little icon there shows that it's pending. And if I click on the application, we can see that it's updating. And when this is finished uploading, we're gonna see it on the cloud. And then you can actually share from within your local computer as well. So say for example, I wanna share this new text document. I'm gonna share it out from the local computer. Test drive.txt, right click it. When OneDrive is in use, these options become available. So again, I have the option, uh, anyone with the link or specific people, allow editing, set expiration and password, those are premium options. I'm gonna say yes and just copy the link. It's creating a link. 
and then I could share it out that way as well without even having to log into the online version to do sharing. And now we can see that Google Drive setup executable is now back inside OneDrive. That's how the Microsoft OneDrive online storage and application works seamlessly with the locally installed Microsoft OneDrive file synchronization app. And if this isn't running for some reason, you can always just type in OneDrive. This also opens that local folder, the OneDrive folder right there. And then finally, there are preferences. If you want to go to settings for OneDrive, there's a couple things you can do. You can add other folders to be backed up inside OneDrive as well. They only let you choose these locations, so you can either choose them or not choose them, but you can't set custom locations. Again, you can see your available storage, so you can modify those settings, and then there's also an option to pause syncing, which is very handy if you're on a metered connection, such as a phone hotspot. Now, lastly, I want to show you how the file synchronization works between a phone, a computer, and the cloud. So. On my phone, I've installed the Microsoft OneDrive app, which I got from Google Play Store. This is an Android phone. I have already signed in using my Microsoft account. And here you can see the exact same data on the phone that's on the local folder on the computer and that's on the cloud. Now, if I delete something from the phone, let's do that test document. If I click on these three buttons and go to delete, it's asking me if I wanna delete it for sure, yes. And now, it disappeared from the phone. Now watch what happens locally. There it goes. And if we look at the server, it deleted from the server at that same second. And if we delete something from the server, I'm going to delete this folder one. It's saying, you want to do that for sure? Yes. Now watch the phone and the app. It's already gone from the local file synchronization app. And I did a swipe down to update on the phone, and now it's gone from the phone as well. So this is what I mean when I say one device rules them all. No matter where you make the change, it's reflected on all the devices. So as you can see, when you use OneDrive Cloud Storage and application and the OneDrive file synchronization app together, and especially when you use it on multiple devices, it becomes extremely powerful. You can have your data anywhere, anytime and you always see the same data across the devices. I personally use Microsoft OneDrive and Google Drive on a daily basis in my own IT systems. It's critical for me to have access to the same data no matter where I am. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this information was helpful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I do read them and I will respond. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more computer tutorials videos. Thank you very much, bye.